What's going on guys, it's Jack here, and today I'm going to talk about coloring in LEGO Mox and why it's so important to actually think about what colors you're using and how to go about using them. Before I get into that, I do want to say that the next few videos are going to be mock videos. My camera just came in, so everything after this is going to be mocks. Yippee! But back to the actual colors, the reason I want to talk about coloring in LEGO Mox is just because I've been looking at a lot of mocks recently as I've been building and not being able to record them. I've just been seeing so many mocks that have just felt off to me and something just hasn't felt right and I've boiled it down to the color. I feel like a lot of people just disregard colors and they just throw stuff together that, you know, it matches kind of and it doesn't look like they built something when they were five. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. The contrast isn't there. It's just, it's hard to explain, but I'm going to do my best to boil it down and break it down for you. The first thing I want to talk about is contrast. I want you to take this build that I built last year and look at it closely. Tell me what you think is really good about it that really makes it stand out. It's not the building techniques. It's not the shaping. Nothing like that. It's the colors. You see, it has some strange colors that you don't see in normal LEGO mocks. It's orange and sand green. Those things don't look like they would go together. You would never think to place them together. Together, but they have something that we call complementary color contrast. Basically, orange and green are on opposite sides of the color wheel. One is warm, one is cool. When you place two colors like that that are opposites to each other in the same area, something in the human brain just goes nuts. I don't know exactly how to explain it, and I may sound like a rookie here, but I took a couple years of photography, and my teacher used to stress just how important it was to actually have complementary colors. That contrast of the warmer and colder colors really does add oomph to your mock, if that makes any sense. Basically, it can be applied to any concept. You know, if you want to have contrast in your build, it's going to make you like it a whole lot more. If I include a lot of dark grays in my mock, maybe I want some bright blues. Or if I have a lot of blacks, I'm going to want some whites. That contrast is going to create depth, and it's going to make your mock look a whole lot better. I see a lot of people just go with a bland color scheme of whites, grays, you know, everything like that, which is fine if you're going for a muted, kind of dreary build. But I see a lot of people try and do some spicy stuff with those colors, and it just does not look good. That actually brings me to my second point, which is color combination. And I know that it sounds very broad and very vague, but trust me on this, when you're choosing colors, you don't want to go random and just do stupid stuff. For example, if I'm using bright yellow, I don't want to use black as my accent color because that looks ridiculous. It's a bumblebee. Take this recent modular, for example. Here, I used a bunch of different colors in the build. In fact, it almost looks like a hodgepodge or a color palette where I just slammed a bunch of leftover pieces there. But that's not the case. If you look a little bit closer, you can see I used lime green and I used medium and blue as the main colors, but I also accented them with some darker versions of themselves. You can see the lime green has dark green going along the sides, and the medium blue has dark blue going along those sides. And the reason I did that is to add that darkening of the colors to make it transition a little bit easier. As you can see, the blue kind of fades into the green because the dark blue looks very similar to dark green, but it doesn't really jar out at you because the blues go together and the greens go together. And I'm going to use this as an extension to my last point because you might be thinking, Jack, you just talked about contrast, but I'm only seeing cool colors here, and that is a good point. However, that's kind of intentional, and there is some contrast. It's just kind of subtle and hard to see. I was going for a relaxed kind of vibe because this is a beach house, so basically I used a bunch more cool colors than I did warm colors, and to add that contrast that I knew was necessary, all I did was sprinkle in some orange nougat bricks here, and that just added the warm colors I needed for that contrast, but it didn't really overshadow anything else, and it didn't really pop out at you too much, but it's subtle enough that you actually get that soothing contrast, if that makes any sense. I, I'm just rambling on, really. But the final point I want to make is just knowing what you're building. I just talked about how I wanted to go for a cool vibe when building my beach house, and you need to understand what you're trying to go for when you're building your mocks. Take this Hawkins Lab, for example, from Stranger Things. When I wanted to build this, I knew it needed to look industrial, kind of high-tech, but also in an 80s style. So I threw out the colors I knew I would not be using, like the reds, like the blues, like the yellows, everything like that. I knew I I would not be using and I grabbed the subtle colors that would look industrial and very formal and not something that's meant to look poppy like grays, blacks, whites, all those grayscale colors. So make sure you understand that. For example, if you're building modern stuff, you're going to want a lot of whites and glass pieces. If you're building something vintage, you want tans, you want browns, basically earthy colors and wooden colors like that. But those are the points I wanted to make. So if you apply those, hopefully your mocks will get a whole lot better. But that's all I had to cover in this video. Again, I will be back with mocks this Friday. So make sure you stay tuned. I will link some more videos down below if you want to, you know, fill that void of videos with some more stuff that I've made in the past. But as always, thanks so much for watching, and most importantly, take care.